Hi, in the last episode we finished with the relay parameters. Today I will try to explain why we should use the diode between two pins for power supply for coil and also I will explain how to calculate the current what will flow through the coil. Here I have a small board with four relays so this is a, like a ready pack and uh, on the back here we have uh, the relay pins and actually the basis of the relays and here this, uh, these pins are uh, high voltage on the top and this space here that's the isolation between um, the high voltage and the low control voltage and why they use the uh, small diodes diodes are used to remove the high peak voltages when the relay goes off so when we disconnecting the voltage from coil this happening because the coil is storing the energy in the core as a magnetic field but when we disconnect the supply voltage the energy stored in the core is trying to push the electrons through the circuit and because there is no way to go for electrons there is a high peak of a voltage on the coil ends i will show this on the oscilloscope how it looks like here we have a 24 volts dc coil and now the coil is on so the power supply is on and now i just switched off the power supply and as we see here there's a huge peak of the voltage and now I have a 50 volts per decade. So we can see here the peak to peak voltage is 180, almost two volts. A so high voltage peak can damage a PLC or any other different devices like a small Arduino. And in Arduino, for example, there is no extra transistors on the way uh, from the input to uh, controller so what we can do to stop the peaks we can add a snubber network so we can add a diode if we have a positive voltage here on this side and a negative on this side and we're gonna add a diode like this and then what's gonna happen if we're gonna put a voltage here uh, the diode will not conduct only the current will flow through the coil but when the power supply will go off and the coil wants to push some voltage through the circuit then the voltage will go through the diode and back on the positive side sometimes uh, we can find another diode here to stop the voltage goes to the other devices or to the other circuits and some devices with the bigger coils uh, there is a resistor connected in series to reduce the current what flows through the diode. In the bigger uh, inductive devices like transformers, uh, switching power supplies, what I've been talking in the uh, first episodes, there is a capacitor on the way and all these three elements, a capacitor, a resistor and diode, that's the snubber network. What we'll see in the future uh, in many applications but even in the small relays like this, it's worth to put the snapper network. So I will show how it looks in real life. I will just add the diode between these two pins. The relay is on at the moment and I'm switching the relay off and we will see the change of the voltage is only 30 volts, 31 volts, and there is no peaks like before and the voltage didn't go up over 24 volts what is the supply voltage so we solve the problem in 100% of course if we have the same situation but we have a supply uh, of the AC uh, voltage then we cannot use a diode because it, the diode will conduct one way always uh, so this is the uh, snapper network for AC so is a resistor and capacitor and these two components uh, need to be calculated to conduct the high peaks with high frequency and stop the low frequency 
uh, from the power supply. Many PLCs have already built in the, some components in the input and output uh, modules to stop the high peaks, but it's very important to know that something like this happening. So for example, if we just need to connect single relay to the output card, then we don't need a snapper network. But for example, if we need to connect two relays in series, where actually we need to control a few voltages or a few different devices, we need to remember about these high peaks because this may damage the contacts on the next uh, relay in series. As we've seen on the oscilloscope, the voltage goes really high in the peaks. So it's always worth to secure the circuit with a few small components like this. Also, we need to think how big the coil is, because of course in the small relays, the currents, uh, even on the high peaks of a voltage, will be very, very low. And we don't need to think about it. But in bigger coils, like uh, big solenoids or big contactors, the currents uh, will be much, much higher. I promise that we're gonna calculate what current will flow through the coil. Of course, I will do it this for DC, uh, because for AC, we need to add the inductance and some complicated formulas. But for DC, this is a simple uh, calculation with uh, what we can use the ohmometer, and uh, from ohm law, we can calculate the current. So here's the resistance of the coil. It's 1.34, we'll say, kilo ohms, and with 24 volts, there should be 18 milliamps. Uh, so that's the current what will flow uh, through the coil. As we can see, it is very low current and we can physically check this uh, by connecting the relay to 24 volts and connecting the uh, multimeter through the circuit. And as we see, there's almost 18 milliamps. So everything is exactly the same as we calculated. This is quite important for small microcontrollers, even for small Arduinos, where the currents from the microcontroller is very, very low, and sometimes it's not enough to power up the uh, relay coil. Of course, there's a few disadvantages about relays as well. The first one is a switching speed. What is very, very low compared to transistors is really slow. And for this problem, we can find a solution with solid state relays, what we're gonna talk about it soon. The next disadvantage is a mechanical construction. The contacts uh, can be burned, the whole mechanism can be damaged, the coil can be damaged, and this is very, very big disadvantage. The good thing is uh, the relays are still quite cheap. They can conduct uh, high currents, and because this is an inductive device, there is no heat generated inside uh, the relay because there will be some heat on the contact uh, because they, there always will be some resistance and uh, resistance of the coil but we don't need to dissipate uh, the heat in the solid state relays that's everything for today in next episode i will talk about timers what is the type of relays i will show again the parameters of the timers and how to connect the timers of course so see you in the next episode